True Luna, written by Tessa Lilly, narrated by Megan Spencer. Day before. I woke up early in the morning and got up right away. I was excited, really, really excited. Tomorrow is my birthday. Tomorrow I'll be 18 and I will meet my wolf. I couldn't wait to shift for the first time. They say it's painful, but I didn't care about that part. It is just for a little while, and it gets easier later. I can survive a little pain. I just wish that my parents were here to see me shift for the first time. It had been eight years since they died, and it hadn't gotten any easier. They were killed in a rogue attack. On the night of the attack, rogues tried to kill our Alpha's son. We were celebrating his 18th birthday and his first shift. He was supposed to start his training to become a new alpha and take over the pack. However, that night, rogues killed his father, our former alpha, Luke. He was forced to become an alpha right away. And he did an amazing job. He finished his training early, and he made our pack one of the strongest ones. My father was Alpha Luke's beta. He and my mom died protecting alpha, Luna, and their son. That was their job. After their deaths, my brother Andrew became Beta. He and our Alpha were best friends since childhood, and now they run our pack together. My brother is an amazing Beta and an even better brother. He was 17 when our parents died, and after that, he had to take care of our pack and me. He never complained. He took those responsibilities and did the best he could and he did great. He always made sure I was safe and taken care of. He still does. I finished high school a few months ago, and all I have to do now is train. We have to train every day, but tomorrow I get a day off because it's my birthday and my first shift. I couldn't wait to shift. It'll be amazing, and maybe I will be luckier than my brother and meet my mate soon. I had to go to training soon, so I brushed my teeth, took a quick shower, and got dressed. I put on my black tights, training bra, gray hoodie, and my black Nike sneakers. I tied my long brown hair into a ponytail and went downstairs. I was unpleasantly surprised. Sienna was standing in my kitchen, looking at me like she wanted to kill me. She's 25, just like my brother and Alpha, and she has been hanging out with them since childhood. Now, she's clinging on to them like they are a lifeboat. She was devastated when she found out that neither my brother nor Alpha were her mates. That didn't stop her from trying to become Luna. She's always around Alpha, proving herself and trying to convince him to take her as his chosen mate. Sienna was tall, blonde, and perfect. Her makeup was always on point. Her hair was always combed and styled to perfection. But she destroyed all that with the way she behaved. She was bitchy, mean, and disrespectful. She hated me and treated me like I was trash. But only when we were alone. When we were around my brother or Alpha, she was a totally different person. She was nice to me. And she once told my brother that I was like a little sister to her. Yuck. I tried telling my brother about her, but he didn't believe me. He told me I was jealous of her and how much time they spent together. Sienna, I said coldly and grabbed a mug from a cupboard. Good morning, ugly, she said and smirked. It must be good to sleep as long as you do. Maybe you should try it too. I said, as I poured coffee into my mug. You need as much beauty sleep as you can get. I turned towards her with a smirk on my face. She was pissed. You little bitch, she said through her teeth. I will become Luna soon, and I will exile you so you will not be able to blink. She always did this. She threatened to exile me when she would become a Luna. I knew she would actually do it. 
and I could only hope she didn't become a Luna. I wanted to say something back, but I heard the front door open. My brother and our Alpha walked into our kitchen. Sienna quickly put on the biggest fake smile on her face. I rolled my eyes. How didn't anybody see how fake she was? Good morning, little one, my brother said and kissed my forehead. That was his favorite nickname for me. I was small, smaller than any wolf of my age, and he liked to point that out, especially because he was huge, 6'4", and had muscles all over his body, just like an alpha. We looked a lot alike. We both had brown hair and bright blue eyes. He was more tan than me, though. I inherited my mom's pale complexion. I was out in the sun all the time, but I couldn't seem to get tanned. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Logan, I said and smiled. I get to call Alpha by his first name only in the privacy of our homes. On other occasions, I must refer to him as Alpha or Alpha Logan. Sienna didn't like that. She gave me an I will kill you look over their shoulders. Tomorrow is your first shift. Are you excited? Logan asked me. Yes. I said, and smiled brightly. I can't wait to meet my wolf. Maybe you will find your mate, Emma, Sienna said coldly. And maybe we will lose you to him tomorrow. She gave a fake sad look to my brother. Goddess, they were so blind if they didn't see through her act. Don't worry, Sienna, my brother said. She will always be our little sister. No mate will take that away from us. I wanted to scream and throw up. She was not my sister. She was a fake bitch who couldn't wait to get rid of me. But I couldn't say anything, so I just gave him a fake smile. After your shift, we can start working at a pack house, Logan said. You went to high school to work at the pack office, right? I did, I said and smiled. I can't wait to start working. Good, Logan said and smiled. He was handsome, even more when he smiled. And that was rare. He was usually very serious and focused only on his job as an alpha. He always did what's best for his pack. That was why he was so successful. He was as tall and as muscular as my brother, maybe even more. The alpha and beta of the pack were always the strongest wolves, and it always showed. You could always see who alpha and beta were. He had dark blonde hair and green eyes. His jaw and his nose were chiseled perfectly, and his lips looked soft. He was hot. No wonder Sienna was all over him. She drooled after my brother as well, but being beta's mate wasn't good enough for her. Although, if my brother took her as his chosen mate, she would accept that as well. She was only after the title and power. Too bad they couldn't see that. A doorbell interrupted my thoughts. Jacob was here. I will see you tonight. Goodbye, Logan, Sienna, I said and gave my brother a kiss on the cheek. Logan smiled at me and Sienna gave me a cold stare. Bitch. I walked out of the kitchen and opened the front door. My friend Jacob was standing there, smiling at me. I always had a crush on him. I still do. He's handsome, tall, muscular, and has black hair. His dark brown eyes look like a pool of chocolate, and I love chocolate. Sometimes I wish he would be my mate. We would be great together, and I know he likes me. He told me himself. We never dated or even talked about it. We saved ourselves for our mates. Not all of us saved ourselves for our mates, though. I know for a fact that my brother and Logan had their share of she-wolves. I think Logan even slept with Sienna, which only added to her belief that she would be his Luna. Jake and I never talked about it, but I think he slept with some she-wolves as well. Jacob is 22, but he still hasn't found his mate.
so maybe he is mine and I'm his. I will not be happy to know that he slept around if he is my mate, but I don't want to hold his past against him. Good morning, beautiful, he said and gave me a kiss on the cheek. You will be amazing. I'm really honored that you asked me to be there. Of course I did, I said. You and Amy are my best friends. I want you there. Maybe I'll be something else to you as well, he said and winked. I laughed. Maybe you will. We walked over to the training grounds together. Amy was already there waiting for us. She's a year older than me, and we met at high school. She introduced me to Jacob. They are cousins. Well, if it isn't my two favorite wolves, she said and smiled brightly. Hello, Amy, Jake said and gave her a kiss on the cheek. She gave me a big hug. I can't wait to meet your wolf tomorrow, Emmy. Our wolves will be best friends. I just know it. Just like we are. Oh, I'm sure, Alora, I said with a huge grin. Enough chit-chatting, girls. Time to train. I'll see you later, Jake said and walked over to his training ground. Jacob works as a patrol wolf, so he trains harder and differently than us. Patrol wolves train separately from the rest of us. Amy works at a greenhouse. She's amazing with plants. After an hour and a half, we were done with our daily training session. Jake still had an hour left, so Amy and I went home to shower and change. We would meet at a diner we always went to. I quickly showered and changed into a pair of jeans, a white sweater, and my black Converse sneakers. I dried my hair and let it fall down to my waist. When I came to the diner, Amy was already sitting at our usual booth. Hey, lady, she said. You look amazing. Thank you, I smiled. Not as amazing as you do. She is gorgeous, tall, skinny, but with curves in all the right places, and totally confident. All the boys want her. And he's totally in love with you, she laughed. Most boys are, actually. What are you talking about? I said and frowned. Come on, Emma, she said and rolled her eyes. You are beautiful and hot. I can't believe you never noticed the looks you're getting. It makes Jake totally jealous. I always thought they were looking at you, I said and smirked. Amy laughed. Well, they do, but I'm not the only one they're looking at. I blushed and looked down at my hands. Well, I don't care. I will wait for my mate. And here he comes, Amy said and pointed at the door. Jake was walking in. He gave us a big smile and walked over to our booth. He sat down beside me and kissed my cheek. Hey, girls, what are we talking about? He asked. Mates. I can't wait to revisit that topic tomorrow, Jake said and winked at me. I laughed and blushed. Okay, stop making me blush. Jake laughed and pinched my cheek. Why? There is no prettier sight. Okay, lovebirds, enough, Amy said and laughed. Emma, when are we meeting tomorrow? Well... I have lunch with my brother and spend the day with him, and we will meet at the shift site at 8 p.m., I said. Great. I can't wait to see if your wolf will be as small as you, Amy said and laughed. Jake joined her as I glared at them. You bitches. Oh, come on, Emmy, Jake said, laughing. We love how small you are. I frowned, but joined their laughter. We spent the rest of the day talking, laughing, and making plans for our first run together. I can't wait to see what's to come tomorrow. 18. Good morning, Emma. I turned towards the door to greet my brother, but nobody was standing there. 
I'm alone. But whose voice was that? It is me, silly. Your wolf. I flinched. Of course. It is my birthday. I got my wolf today. It is weird, though, to hear a voice inside my head. You will get used to it, a voice said. It will take some time, I responded. We have all the time in the world, my wolf said. What is your name? I asked her. Eliza. I like it, I told her. I know you do, Emma. Now, get up and go spend the day with your brother. Asher has already sensed my presence, and he can't wait to meet me, she said. I got up excitedly and full of energy. I can't wait to see Eliza. I brushed my teeth, showered, and put on sweats and a hoodie. Perfect for a lazy birthday day with my brother. When I came downstairs, Andrew had already made pancakes. It was our traditional birthday breakfast. Happy birthday, Emma! He yelled and gave me a big hug. Asher sends to Eliza. He's so excited to finally meet his sister. She can't wait to meet him too, I said and gave him a big smile. I adore Asher. He's the best wolf there is. Come on, let's eat, he said and pulled me to the table. After we were full, we went to the living room to start our first movie of the day. We always watched the Avenger series. Humans did a great job on those movies. At around 1 p.m., Andrew and I went to the kitchen to start making lunch. On my birthday, we have my favorite meal, lasagna. On his birthday, we have his favorite meal, pizza. I started making the lasagna while Andrew sat down at the kitchen table. Maybe you will find your mate soon, he said. Maybe, I said, not looking up at him. I don't like talking to him about this. He's my brother, and talking about mating is weird. And I don't want to leave him, ever. It will be really hard for me to leave with my mate. Maybe it'll be Jacob, he said. I looked up at him. Would you be okay with that? Yes, he said and shrugged. He's one of our best warriors, so I know you would be safe with him. And I know you like him already. It would be easier for you to go with him. I walked over and sat beside him. It won't be easy for me to leave, no matter who my mate is. You are my family. I don't want to leave you. I know, Em, he said and smiled. I don't want you to leave, but if you find your mate, you will, and we will be okay. Maybe I won't find him, I said, and got back up. You never did. Yes, he nodded. But I have a pretty good feeling you will, and it'll be Jacob. I smiled and rolled my eyes. We will see. He got up and helped me finish our lunch. After we ate, we went back to the living room to watch another movie. At around 7 p.m., Andrew told me to go and get ready. We had to walk for about 20 minutes to reach the shifting site in the forest. It is a small clearing in the middle of the forest where all wolves go for their first shift. It is special because it is the only place in the forest where the moon can shine on you completely. Our forest is so thick that moon can barely shine through the trees. The clearing is the only place it shines freely. I put on my white dress, chosen especially for this night. It is tradition to wear white on the night of our first shift. I put on my shoes and went back downstairs. Andrew was waiting for me at the door. He handed me my jacket and we left the house. My heart was pounding in my chest. Andrew probably heard it because he grabbed my hand and pulled me closer to him. Don't be scared, Emma, he said quietly. It will be amazing, and I will be there for you. Thank you, I said. I love you. 
I love you too, little one, he said and gave me a side hug. After about 20 minutes, we arrived at the clearing. My friends and Luna, Gloria, were already there, waiting for us. Luna approached me first. Happy birthday, sweetie. I can't wait to meet your wolf. Thank you, Aunt Gloria. She's excited to meet you too, I said with a big smile. Amy and Jacob came towards me with big smiles on their faces. Happy birthday, Emmy, Amy said and gave me a tight hug. Happy birthday, Emma, Jake said and kissed my cheek. Now, let's meet your wolf. It is cold and I don't want you to get sick. He's right. It is December and the only thing I'm wearing is a dress. I do have a jacket, but it's not keeping me warm. The only reason I'm not shivering is excitement. He's right, Emma, Andrew said. Give me your jacket and stand in the middle of the clearing. I did what he said and stood in the middle of the clearing. They all gave me an encouraging smile and turned around to give me some privacy to remove my clothes. I carefully removed my dress, underwear, and shoes and folded them neatly into a pile. I stood back and looked up at the moon. Are you ready, Emma? My wolf said. I am, I responded. How do I do this? Just let go. It will hurt, but don't fight it. It'll be over soon. Let go and give me control, she said. I did what she said. I took a deep breath and let her take control of our mind and body. I started to feel my bones break. I let out a little scream and fell down on my knees. That's right, Em, I heard my brother's voice. It will be okay. Just let go. The pain was unbearable. It was like breaking all of your bones at the same time. I fought the urge to throw up and focused on letting go of my control. The first shift. A few moments later, I was standing on all fours, my white fur shimmering under the moonlight. I took a deep breath and lifted my head proudly. My friends and family turned around and gasped. She is white, Luna Gloria said. I looked at her and cocked my wolf head. Is that something special? We are a pure white wolf, Emma. Nobody is a pure white wolf, Eliza said. What do you mean? I asked her. There are white wolves. I've seen them before. Yes, but none of them are pure white, she said proudly. They all have a spot in a different color, or their paws are different. We are all white. What does that mean? Amy asked quietly. I don't know, my brother said, not taking his eyes off my wolf. But she's beautiful. She is, Jacob said quietly. I looked at him and immediately felt disappointed. No sparks, no connection. He's not my mate. We are not his, Eliza said. We belong to somebody else. What do you mean, Eliza? I asked, surprised. Do you know who our mate is? I do, she said. You will know soon. Who is he? I asked. How do you know? It isn't common for a wolf to know who his or her mate is. They only know when they see them, but not before. What is going on? I'm not talking to you about it, Eliza said. Now stop thinking about this and focus on your friends and family. Andrew is trying to mind link you. I pulled my focus away from our conversation and focused on my brother's voice inside my head. Now that I shifted, I can mind link the entire pack. Emma? He called me. Emma, can you hear me? Yes, 
I responded. Sorry, I was talking to Eliza. You are beautiful, Emma, he said proudly. Do you want to go for a run? Yes, I said with excitement in my voice. My brother told the rest of the group to shift, and we all went for a run. Eliza met all the wolves, and I could tell she loved them, and they loved her, especially Asher. He was attentive and careful with Eliza, just like Andrew was with me. When I had enough, I mind-linked Andrew to tell him to go back. All the excitement and nervousness got to me, and I was tired. We got back to the clearing and took our clothes into our mouths. We all went behind a tree to shift and change. Shifting back hurt as well, but not like the first time. Each time we do this, it will be easier, Eliza said. After a while, it won't hurt at all. I walked back to the clearing, and my friends and family were already there. They hugged me and gave me a lot of kisses. They are proud of me and happy that I finally have my wolf. Nobody mentioned that I'm a pure white again, so I just decided to forget about it. It is nothing special. I am nothing special. Luna Gloria left first. We stayed at the clearing for a while, just chatting and laughing. After a few minutes, we started walking back. Jacob walked beside me, and Andrew and Amy were in front of us. So, we're not mates, he said with sadness in his voice. I guess not, I responded, not looking up at him. That doesn't mean we can't be, he said. I would choose you as my mate. I love you, Emma. I looked up at him, surprised. But before I could say anything, my brother interfered. Jacob, no, he said strictly. At least, not yet. I know you love my sister, but she is only 18, and there is a chance she will meet her true mate. If she doesn't in a few years, and if you don't find your mate by then, you can make her your chosen mate. If she wants to get a chosen mate. But not before she has had the chance to find her true mate. I looked between Andrew and Jacob. Jacob wanted to fight, but he knew my brother was right. I love Jake, but I deserve a chance to find my true mate. After a few seconds of Andrew and Jake just glaring at each other, Jacob nodded and lowered his head. You are right, he said quietly, but I will wait for her. I'm sorry, Jake, I said and took his hand in mine. You have nothing to be sorry about, he said, and gave me a small smile. Amy was quiet the whole time, but I could tell she was sad. She really hoped Jake and I would be mates. We continued our walk through the forest, and soon we were back at our house. Jake and Amy said their goodbyes and went home. Andrew and I went back inside the house, and I looked at my watch. It was 10 p.m. Hey, do you want to watch another movie? It's not too late. Andrew asked and took my jacket to put it away. I would, but I'm so tired, I said. He smiled. Yeah, the first shift will do that to you. I will just go to bed, I said. Thank you for today. I loved it. I loved it too, little one, he said with a big smile. Asher and I love your wolf. We love you too, I said and smiled. I walked upstairs and Andrew went to the living room. I hopped in the shower and put on my pajamas. I got under the covers and closed my eyes immediately. I don't think I slept long when I was awoken by a loud knock on our front door. Mate. I looked at my watch and saw that it was 11 p.m. Who was here this late? I removed the covers and went towards my bedroom door. I opened them in time to hear my brother's voice. Logan? He said. 
What are you doing here? Where is she? Where is Emma? Logan asked nervously. His voice was the most amazing sound I've ever heard. It was like music to my ears. What was wrong with me? It never sounded like that before. It must have been because I was tired. But he sounded cold, rushed. I didn't know why he was asking for me, but I had a feeling that I was in trouble. But I didn't do anything wrong. Emma? My brother asked. She is sleeping. Why? I could hear surprise and confusion in his voice. I started walking toward the stairs and was instantly hit with the most amazing smell. Pine needles and snow. It smelled like a winter forest. Mate! Eliza screamed in my head. What? I asked and froze. It is Logan, Emma. He is our mate. Go to him, Eliza said excitedly. Logan? The Alpha? He's my mate? I am a Luna? I had a million questions in my head. My feet started moving against my will. It was like something was pulling me downstairs. Well, not something. The mate bond. Wake her up, Logan growled. Now. He sounded mad. Why was he mad? I'm awake, I said, and started walking down the stairs. I stopped in the middle to look at Logan. Everything shifted when I looked into his eyes. He was now the center of my world. He was everything. I felt this incredible need to touch him, to be in his arms. I wanted to run to him, but I stopped myself when I saw how cold his stare was. What was going on? Logan? My brother called him. She's my mate, Logan said through his teeth. My brother gasped and looked up at me. I nodded and looked back at Logan. He was standing there looking at me with a cold expression on his face. His fists were clenched and his posture was rigid. He didn't want me. That's why he was so angry. I was not good enough to be his Luna. Emma, Andrew called my name. Go to your room now. He must have seen how angry Logan was and wanted to talk to him about this. I turned away and walked back upstairs. But there was no way I was going back into my room. I wanted to hear what Logan would say. I had a feeling I knew, though. I heard them walk into the kitchen, and I sat at the top of the stairs. I would be able to hear them talk, and hopefully, they would be focused on their conversation and would not be able to hear or sense me. I just had to be very quiet. I hugged my knees and waited. Talk, my brother said coldly. How did you know before you even saw her? I don't know, Logan sighed. I could sense and smell her. It happened about an hour ago. At first, I thought I was going crazy. But then I decided to follow that smell. I knew for sure when I came close to your house. Leon started going crazy. That's weird, my brother said. Mates usually know when they see each other. They can't sense it before. I know, but I did. Logan growled. My brother sighed. Why are you angry? She can't be my Luna, Andrew, Logan said. My heart broke. I hugged my knees even tighter. I felt warm tears running down my cheeks. Nothing hurts like your mate's rejection. What? Why? My brother asked angrily. She is a child, Logan said. She's not strong enough to be a Luna. I need someone stronger. You're kidding me, right? My brother yelled. You are going to throw away Goddess's gift because you don't think she's strong enough? It's for the pack, Logan said calmly. You know our pack needs strong leadership. 
especially now that rogues are attacking even more frequently. Alpha is always stronger when he has his Luna by his side, my brother growled. He is, and I will have my Luna, Logan said. I'm thinking about taking Sienna as my chosen mate. My heart stopped beating. He was choosing another she-wolf instead of me. And not just any wolf. Sienna. She wanted to get rid of me. And she will. She will become a Luna, and she will exile me from my pack. Maybe she will even kill me. And when she finds out, I'm Logan's true mate. Why didn't you already do that if you think she will be a great Luna? My brother asked angrily. I wanted to wait for my true mate, Logan answered, to see if I was gifted with a strong she-wolf. But now that I see that is not the case, I can freely choose somebody else. I can't believe this, my brother said quietly. You know I'm right, Andrew. Logan said, you know that you, me, and Sienna will be great leaders, and the pack will benefit greatly from our leadership. We can't do that with your sister. She's only 18. My brother said nothing, and I think he agreed with Logan. He thought I was not strong. I didn't think my heart could break even more. I've heard enough. I got up and walked to my room. My heart was breaking into a million tiny pieces. I didn't think that I would ever be able to put it back together. And he hasn't officially rejected me yet. I didn't know how I would survive when he does. Mates can reject each other. It doesn't break the bond, though. Nothing does. It is only words but it lets you know that your mate doesn't want you. And it's horrible. The bond is alive, but you can't do anything about it. Being exiled by Sienna and becoming a rogue suddenly didn't sound so bad. It was better than staying here, watching them together. It would kill me slowly. Eliza? I called my wolf. Are you okay? No, Emma, she whined. I'm in pain. I know, I said. I am sorry. His wolf wants us, she whined. Leon wants us. It is Logan who is fighting the bond. I didn't respond, and I felt her going further back in my mind. I didn't think I would hear from her again tonight. She needed to heal. I couldn't stay here. I couldn't see my brother. I couldn't see him. I quickly put on my tights, a hoodie, and sneakers. I grabbed a jacket from my wardrobe and opened my window. My room was on the second floor, but there was a roof just underneath it. I always sneaked out this way when my brother forbade me from going out with Amy. He never caught me. I hoped that tonight would be the same. I carefully climbed out onto the roof and made my way down. I had to be really careful not to make any noise. I was in a house with an alpha and a beta wolf. Their hearing was even better than other werewolves. I just hoped they were still talking and focused on their conversation. I climbed down and started walking towards the forest. There was a cave nearby where Amy, Jake, and I always went to hang out when we wanted to be alone. I needed to go there and think. Rejection. Logan, POV. I wanted to reject her on the spot. But when I saw her standing there on the stairs, I couldn't do it. I couldn't say those words. I saw that she was happy when she looked at me. She wanted to go to me. But she saw my cold stare and she stopped herself. Goddess, she was beautiful. I always thought she was pretty and hot. But now that she was my mate, she was even more beautiful than before. She smelled like strawberries and watermelon. 
Her long brown hair was falling freely down her back, and her blue eyes were an ocean I want to swim in. Her lips were perfect. Her small body was perfect. Every curve was made for me. I just wanted to touch her. I clenched my fists to stop myself. I shot Leon out completely because he would kill me for what I was about to do. He was so happy when we smelled her. I didn't want him to see this. I would deal with him later. I was relieved when Andrew told her to go upstairs. I'd be able to think clearly now that she wasn't here. I could tell Andrew was not happy with my explanation. But he knew that I was right. He knew that the pack always came first. And his sister was a child. She just shifted today. She couldn't control her wolf properly, and she couldn't fight in wolf form. The rogues would use her against me, and that would ruin the pack. I needed a strong Luna. Sienna would be a great Luna. She was strong and kind. Our pack would benefit from having her as a Luna. Andrew, I called him after he didn't respond. Fuck, he muttered. You're right, Sienna is strong, and she would be a great Luna. But that doesn't mean my sister couldn't get stronger. It doesn't, I agreed. But we don't have the time to train her, to make her stronger. Rogues would use her as a liability against me, and the pack would suffer. You know I'm right. He nodded and ran his hand through his hair. Do you want to tell her now? He asked me. I nodded. Yes. It doesn't make sense to wait. Fine, he said. I will go get her. I took a deep breath and tried to calm myself. I couldn't get distracted by the bond, by her. I needed to do this for my father and for my pack. It wouldn't sever the bond. Nothing did. I would still feel her. She would still be my mate, but I would be free to make Sienna my Luna. Fuck! I heard Andrew yell, and I immediately ran upstairs. Her smell was so intoxicating up here. I couldn't help but to breathe it in deeply. What happened? I asked Andrew. He left her room, but she wasn't with him. She left, he growled. I froze and my heart started beating painfully. She left. She probably heard us and left. What if something happened to her? I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't live without her. Leon, I called my wolf. Can you feel our mate's wolf? Is she okay? No, he growled at me. Her wolf is in pain. She retracted far back in mate's mind. I can't feel her. Fuck. Fuck. You are a complete fucker, Logan, Leon growled. Mate is perfect and strong. You will be sorry for what you did. I didn't respond, and I pushed him to the back of my mind. I didn't need that now. He is an animal. He reacts purely on instinct. And his instinct is to get his mate. I have to be the one to think rationally and think about our pack. Andrew ran past me and went downstairs. He grabbed his jacket and ran through the front door. I followed him in a daze. Come on, Logan, he growled. Follow her scent. Where did she go? I focused on him and did what he told me to do. Her scent was the strongest underneath her bedroom window, and it continued toward the forest. Shit, Andrew muttered. We hurried towards the forest, and I told him where to go based on the intensity of her scent. It wasn't hard to follow her, so it couldn't be long since she walked this path. Suddenly, her scent just stopped. I couldn't smell her anymore. It was like she just disappeared. My heart stopped beating. What's wrong? Andrew asked. I can't smell her anymore. 
I said quietly. The smell is completely gone. Fuck, he yelled. She used masking spray. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath to calm myself. She was okay. I would have felt if something happened to her. Emma? Andrew yelled. Leon? I called my wolf. I know you're mad at me, but I need you to try and talk to her wolf. Tell her to come back. I will, he growled. But not because of you. I want Mate to be safe. Leon will try to talk to her wolf, I told Andrew. If something happens to her, I will kill you, alpha or not, he growled at me. He was the only one who could say something like that to me. If he wasn't my best friend, he would be dead already. She's okay, Andrew, I said. I would feel if something happened to her. What if she decided to leave the pack, huh? He growled. To become a rogue, because she heard her mate, the one person who should love her unconditionally, say that she is not strong enough to be his mate and Luna. I didn't do that. Not yet, anyway. A voice said from the forest. Andrew and I turned towards the sound. Emma leaned against the tree. I let out a breath I'd been holding. She is okay. She was wearing tights, and that let me see her legs perfectly. Her face was even more beautiful than it was back at the house. How was it possible for someone to become even more beautiful in a matter of minutes? I had to use all my strength not to go to her and make her mine. If I was a regular wolf and not an alpha, I didn't think I would be able to do that. Andrew ran towards her and hugged her. I got jealous. I wanted to do that, but I knew I couldn't. I had to be strong. Goddess, Emma, Andrew yelled. Don't ever do that again. She didn't hug him back. She stepped away from him and looked at me. You're here to reject me, right? She said quietly. Come on, do it. Let's get this over with. Andrew and I shared a confused look. How was she so calm, so strong? I looked back at her, and she was staring at me with her head held high. I took a deep breath and walked closer to her. You know why I have to do this. I do, she nodded. I heard everything. I nodded and ran my hand through my hair. Every part of me was screaming at me not to do this. Leon clawed his way to the front of my mind to see his mate. And he was growling and whining. I didn't want to do this. I wanted her. But I had to, for my pack. I took a deep breath and looked directly into her wonderful eyes. I, Logan Carter, Alpha of the Crescent Moon Pack, reject you. Emma Parker of the Crescent Moon Pack. I could feel my heart breaking. Leon was howling inside me, and I could feel his pain. She was looking right at me, and I could see the pain in her eyes, but she refused to show it. Most wolves fall to their knees from pain. I wanted to fall to my knees and claw at my chest, but she didn't. She was standing there with her head held high. She took a deep breath and closed her wonderful eyes. I, Emma Parker of the Crescent Moon Pack, accept your rejection. I closed my eyes and felt tears running down my cheek. When I opened them, she was gone. The bond was still there. Nothing has changed. I felt the same way toward her. I still wanted her but I just opened the door for me to mate with another she-wolf. Coping, Emma, POV. I never thought I could feel this much pain and survive. My whole body is trembling and my soul is in pieces. There is a huge hole in my heart 
and I don't think I will ever be able to fix it. My mate doesn't want me. I'm not good enough. My brother thinks I'm weak. My mate rejected me. He will have a new Luna, and I will have to look at them every day. I don't know how I came home. I don't remember the path. Pain clouded my vision. I left Logan and Andrew in the forest. And I just started running away. I couldn't go back to the cave. I didn't want them to find out. It would mean that I wouldn't be safe there anymore. We always used masking spray before coming into the cave. But Andrew and Logan came close to finding it. I guess it was because of the mate bond. Logan could smell me better. I started walking to my room. I shut the door and locked it. I didn't want to see my brother. I didn't want to talk to him. I wanted to be alone. I laid on my bed and stared at the ceiling. I just wished I could feel numb. Not happy. I didn't think I would ever be happy again. The best I could have hope for was numbness. Maybe I would be able to achieve that. Maybe the pain would burn through my body tonight. And in the morning, there would be nothing left but numbness. Like poison. It burns, destroys, and leaves. I heard my brother opening the back door and running upstairs. He tried to open my bedroom door. Emma, he called me. Emma, open the door, please. I stayed silent. I didn't want to talk to him. Emma, please, he said. Let me explain. There was nothing to explain. I was a weak, small she-wolf who could never be good enough to be a Luna or Logan's mate. Andrew tried to talk to me a few more times, but he gave up and I refused to answer. I heard him sigh and walk away. I continued to stare at the ceiling. What a way to end a birthday. My day started full of excitement, love, and new beginnings, only to end in pain and misery. I never thought it would happen like this. I stayed up all night and stared at the ceiling and wishing the pain would go away. It sort of worked. By the time I was supposed to get up and go get breakfast, the pain was better, bearable. Maybe I could tell that a small part of me was numb. That was a start. I heard my brother wake up. He walked downstairs to the kitchen and started making breakfast. Half an hour later, I heard Sienna coming. A little while after, Logan arrived as well. It was a tradition for them. They always met at our house, had breakfast, and then they went and done their alpha and beta duties. Sienna just went around being a bitch to everybody. But soon, she would have Aluna's duties. I looked at my watch and saw that I had to be at the training ground in an hour. I decided to get ready and get there early. I couldn't stand being in the same house as them. I got up and hopped in the shower. I quickly got dressed and tied my hair in a ponytail. I looked in the mirror, and my lack of sleep was clearly visible on my face. I sighed and unlocked my bedroom door. I decided to leave through the back door so I didn't have to see anybody. But my brother heard me. Emma! He called me and came running from the kitchen. I stared at him blankly. Where are you going? He asked me. Training grounds, I said quietly. It is early, he said, and Jacob is not here yet. There was a loud growl in the kitchen. Logan. I ignored it and put my focus back on my brother. I want to get there early today. Oh, okay, my brother said nervously. But you didn't eat anything. I'm not hungry, I said and walked through the door. I closed them before he could say anything. I walked over to the training grounds, and I saw that Jake was already there. He saw me and gave me a confused look. Emma? 
what are you doing here? I was just about to go get you, he told me. Before I could say anything, he noticed how tired I looked. Emma, he asked worried, what happened? I'm fine, I said quietly. I couldn't sleep. Why, beautiful? He asked and wrapped me in his arms. Goddess, why couldn't he be my mate? I found my mate. I whispered in his arms. I felt him tense and he pulled away from me to look me in the eyes. He left his hands on my shoulders, holding me tightly. Who is it? He asked me. And why are you so sad? I couldn't answer him. Those words didn't want to leave my mouth. I looked down at my feet. Did he... He started talking, but he stopped himself. I looked back up at him and nodded. His eyes widened. Oh my goddess. I'm so sorry, beautiful. You don't deserve that. Nobody deserves that. I smiled slightly and sighed. Well, I guess it had to happen like that. Who is he? He asked me. Not now, Jake, I said. We will talk after training. He nodded and wrapped me in a hug again. He kissed my forehead and walked over to his training ground. My whole training session sucked. I was so tired and distracted that I got a nice ass whooping. By the end, I was covered in bruises and cuts. Amy walked over to me with a frown on her face. Emmy, you suck today. What happened? Why were you so distracted? I will tell you at the diner, Amy, I said. I need to go home and take a hot shower. Okay, she said, eyeing me up and down. Are you sure you're okay? I nodded and walked away. I just hoped that my brother wasn't home. I didn't want him to see me like this. It would only add to his belief that I was weak. I was lucky. He was out. But a monster waited for me at my house. Sienna. She was leaning on the kitchen counter when I walked in. She eyed me up and down and smiled wickedly. Well, if it isn't the little rejected mate, she said smirking. You know, I always wanted to see the face of a little bitch whose Luna title I would take away. But the fact that it is you only makes it better. I rolled my eyes and started walking upstairs. She ran after me and grabbed my hand, turning me around. Listen here, you little bitch. She spat in my face. I am your Luna, and you will not roll your eyes at me. My Luna is Gloria. You're just a really bad replacement. I spat back. She slapped me hard, and I fell on the floor. I should have seen that coming. She stepped on my arm with her heel. It hurt like hell, but I didn't want to give her the pleasure of screaming. I looked up at her with a murderous look on my face. I can't wait for Logan to mark me as his. I will kill you and make it look like you ran away to be a rogue, she said quietly and walked away. I slowly got up and walked upstairs to my room. My life would be a living hell until Sienna finally ended me. I was sure she would make sure to torture and torment me whenever she had a chance to. Even though Logan rejected me, she still saw me as a threat. Jealousy. Logan, POV. Who the hell is this Jacob guy? It has been bugging me since this morning. I mean, I know that he's one of my best warriors, and he's Emma's friend. But why is he so attentive to my mate? She is not yours anymore, Leon growled. You rejected her, remember? I ignored him. He's been doing that the whole morning. He's been reminding me of what I did and pushing me away. I called my head of patrol in my office. I will find out everything I can about this Jacob guy. He was quick. 
He got to my office in a matter of minutes. Alpha, he addressed me. You wanted to see me? Yes, I said, and sat at my desk. Thank you for coming here on such short notice, Lewis. It wasn't a problem, he said, and smiled. What can I do for you, Alpha? What can you tell me about a warrior named Jacob? I asked. Jacob Walters? He asked. I nodded and waited for him to go on. Well, he's an amazing young man, he said. One of our best warriors. He's strong, a very quick learner, and the other wolves love him. Why? Is there a problem? No, I said and shook my head. No problem, Lewis. I just noticed him in training and saw potential in him. Oh, yes, he smiled brightly. There's a lot of potential in him. He's one of my best. I could tell Lewis was proud of him. Does he have a mate? I asked, trying to sound indifferent. No, he said, shaking his head. But there is a rumor he would like to take a chosen one. He's been in love with his girl forever. Most of my boys are, to tell you the truth. He laughed, and I clenched my fists. If he was talking about Emma, I would kill somebody. Who is that girl? Emma Parker, he said. Your beta sister. I saw red. I clenched my fists and growled. She is mine. Lewis looked at me with a shocked expression on his face. I tried to pull myself together. Thank you, Lewis. You can leave, I said through my teeth. He got up quickly, clearly afraid of me, and left my office in a hurry. As soon as I heard him leave the pack house, I put my fist through the wall. Fuck! Why are you angry, Logan? Leon sneered. You rejected her. Did you really think no other wolves would want her? She's beautiful and perfect. Of course they want her. And now you get to watch another wolf have her while you suffer with that bitch, Sienna. Shut the hell up, Leon, I growled at my wolf. You are smirking like you won't be watching her be with another, just like me. Yes, but I get to shut you out and hurt you just like you did me, he growled back. I will not watch that bitch Sienna be our mate and Luna. That place belongs to Emma. Sienna is my friend, I spat back at him. She's the worst person ever, he said. Asher thinks so as well. You and Andrew are the only blind ones. Our fight was interrupted when Andrew walked into my office. What the hell happened? He asked, looking at the hole in my wall. Did you know that Jacob wants your sister to be his chosen mate? I asked angrily. He sighed and sat on the couch. Yes, I did. We talked about it. I growled. What did you tell him? I told him to give her a chance to meet her true mate, he said calmly. Now that she has, and you rejected her, I don't have a problem with him asking her. I growled loudly and walked over to him. He will not do that. I don't think you have a choice, Logan, he said, looking up at me. You didn't want her. He does. I whined and ran my hand through my hair. I couldn't do anything about that. I had chosen a different mate. She should have an opportunity to do the same. But it would kill me. Looking at another man touching what's mine, it would definitely kill me. There was another rogue attack, Andrew said, pulling me away from my thoughts. What? Where? I turned to him. South border, he said. Our patrol took care of it pretty quickly. Good, I sighed. It has been happening more often. Any word from other alphas? He asked. 
I shook my head. No, but Alpha Drake said he would call soon. We've been in touch with other alphas whose packs are frequently attacked by the rogues. We've been trying to figure out what the rogue king wants. We didn't make any progress, unfortunately. Any rogue wolf who was captured refused to talk, even when tortured. We couldn't get them to talk. But I hope Alpha Drake will give me some good news soon. We have to get to the bottom of this soon, Andrew sighed. We can't fight them if we don't know what they want. We will, I said, and sat back down at my desk. Do you want to go grab something to eat? Andrew asked me. We could go to that diner that has those amazing burgers. I nodded. I needed to eat something. I haven't slept much and my whole body hurt, like somebody beat me up good. As of a few minutes ago, my hands started throbbing. I guess punching a wall hurts more than I thought it would. But it was okay. It would stop soon. We werewolves heal really quickly. On our way out of the pack house, we ran into Sienna. She gave us a warm smile and kissed me on my cheek. Hello, mate, she said and winked at me. Hello, Sienna. I smiled. We're going to the diner to eat something. Do you want to go with us? Sure, she said and smiled brightly. Sienna would be a good mate. She was smart, pretty, and kind. And she was a good fuck, I had to admit. She would be a great Luna. When we got close to the diner, I was hit by the most amazing smell. Strawberries and watermelon. Emma. She was inside. As soon as I got inside, my eyes searched for her. I found her sitting in a booth with her friends, Amy and Jacob, and he had his arm around her. I let go of Sienna and clenched my fists. I growled quietly. Sienna yanked on my hand when I looked at her, irritated. She's not your mate anymore, Logan, she said angrily. I am. Before I could respond, I heard Andrew gasp. I followed his gaze and saw that he was looking at Emma. Why did he gasp? I looked closer and saw that she was covered in bruises and scrapes. I ran towards her and grabbed her upper arm. That fucker Jacob immediately let go of her. Tingles spread through my body. That was the first time I touched her since we found out we were mates. It was the most pleasurable feeling in the world. I could only imagine what it would feel like to kiss her or be inside her. Fuck, Logan, stop thinking about this. Focus. What happened to you? I growled. I heard Andrew beside me. Emma, what happened to your hand? I looked at her hand and saw that it was severely bruised, like somebody had stepped on it. She glanced towards Sienna, and I could swear I saw fear in her eyes. Why was she afraid of Sienna? She looked back at us and pulled her arm from my grip. I immediately felt cold and empty. I had a rough training session, she said quietly and looked down. This is what I thought when I said she wasn't strong enough. If she was attacked by a rogue, she wouldn't be able to defend herself. But that didn't mean that I didn't want to kill the fucker who touched and hurt what belongs to me. You need to be more careful. Andrew said quietly. You mean stronger? She asked and looked at us. When we didn't respond, she sighed and looked down. I'm with my friends, she said. I will see you at home, Andrew. Andrew nodded reluctantly and pulled me to our booth. I didn't want to leave her, but I had to. I couldn't take my eyes off her the entire time we were there. I could see Sienna was pissed, but I couldn't care less. My mate was with another male. I had to keep an eye on her. You rejected her, Leon growled. And you are with another female. I ignored him completely and continued to stare at her. Goddess, she was beautiful. 
tired. Emma, POV. I felt Logan's eyes on me the entire night. I didn't look up at him once. Every time Jacob touched me, there was a low, menacing growl coming from his direction. What the hell was his problem? He was the one who rejected me. He was the one who was sitting there with his new mate and future Luna. Before they came to the diner, I told Amy and Jacob about me and Logan. They were shocked to hear that he had rejected me and that he had chosen Sienna as his mate. They knew all about her, and they were the only ones who believed me. She was a bitch to them as well, so it wasn't hard for them to believe that I was telling the truth about her. I want to kill her for doing that to your hand, beautiful, Jacob said quietly. It's okay, Jake, I said. I will heal. No, it's not okay, Emmy, Amy whined. She hurt you. Until now, she only used her words. But I'm afraid of how far she's willing to go now. Amy's right, Jake nodded. She hates the fact that you are Logan's mate. I'm afraid of what she could do. Maybe I could talk to Alpha and Beta. No, Jacob, I said and grabbed his hand. Promise me you won't do that. They won't believe you. Trust me. I've tried telling my brother about her more than once. He just doesn't want to believe that his friend is a bitch. Just let it go. It'll be okay. I will be okay. She'll forget about me once Logan marks her. I will no longer be a threat to her when that happens. Amy and Jake exchanged worried looks. Fine, Jacob sighed and put his arms around my shoulders. A louder growl came from Logan's booth. He immediately let go of me. Why did you have to be mated to an alpha? He asked, irritated. His energy alone is making it impossible for me to touch you. I have to submit even to his growls. I don't want to lose an arm. I chuckled. I'm sorry, Jacob. It'll get better. When he marks Sienna, he will forget about me. I hope so, he said, and gave me a warm smile. I smiled back and sighed. Well, I should go home. You didn't eat anything, Amy said. I'll eat at home. I said and smiled. That was a lie. I didn't have an appetite. If I ate something, I would throw it all back up anyway. The three of us walked out of the diner, followed by an intense gaze. I sighed and rolled my eyes. For somebody who didn't want me as his mate, he sure stared a lot. Amy and Jacob hugged me goodbye, and I walked to my house. When I got inside, I immediately started walking upstairs. I was stopped abruptly when two large hands grabbed my waist and pulled me back. You are not locking yourself in your room again, Andrew growled in my ear. I was so lost in my thoughts that I didn't even hear him walking behind me. I don't want to talk to you, I said, and tried to wiggle out of his grip. It was useless. He only tightened his grip and picked me up. He walked over to the couch and put me down on my feet. He grabbed my hand and pulled me down to sit on the couch. He sat beside me and tilted my chin so I would look at him. You are my sister. The only family I have. He growled at me. I am not letting another day go by without talking to you. I don't have anything to say, I said quietly. I am sorry, Emma, he said, cupping my face. I am so sorry. You think I'm weak, I said quietly, and a tear rolled down my face. He looked down ashamed. I told him you could get stronger. I think you're more than worthy of being a Luna. But he only sees the physical aspect of things. He doesn't see how strong you are in other aspects of life. I kept quiet. They didn't know that I've been training with Jacob. I was stronger than they thought I was. But me being covered in bruises and scrapes after training today didn't help my case. 
but it only happened because I didn't sleep. I was so tired. I still am. But it shouldn't matter. He should want me the way I am, physically weak or physically strong. It shouldn't matter. I knew I would be a great Luna. Too bad they didn't see it that way. I love you, Emma, he said when I didn't respond. You are the most important thing in my world. Please forgive me. I was thinking like a beta, not like a brother. But when it comes to the issues related to the pack, I have to think like that. I'm really sorry. I knew that he and Logan had to think about the pack first. It was their job, their duty. My father would be proud of Andrew. But I think they at least should have given me a chance to prove myself. Especially Logan. He immediately assumed I wouldn't be good enough. But I couldn't stay mad at my brother forever. He was the only family I had. I love you too, Andrew, I said. And I understand you have to think about the pack. Dad would be proud of you. He wrapped me in a tight hug and kissed my cheek. Does that mean you won't lock yourself in your room anymore? He asked, still holding me tight. I chuckled and nodded. I won't. Good, he said and let me go. Dinner and a movie? I shook my head. I'm really tired, and I already ate. He narrowed his eyes at me. Did you? Yes, I lied. At the diner. Okay, he said, still suspicious. Tomorrow night then? I smiled and nodded. We got up, and I walked over to the stairs. Andrew kissed my forehead before going to the kitchen to make himself something to eat. I was always surprised by the amount of food he could eat. He literally just ate at the diner, and he was making himself something to eat again. I chuckled quietly and shook my head. I walked into my bathroom and hopped into the shower. Bruises and cuts were already healed, but my hand was still bruised. That bitch, Sienna. Stepped on it pretty good. I finished showering and put on my pajamas. I got under the covers and closed my eyes. I hoped that I would get some sleep tonight. <laughs>